today's video is going to be a bit short but I wanted to do a video showing you everything I've been doing in the garden before the season starts and everything goes nuts. So this is the garden currently. It looks very bare but these are the raised beds that I've been building up over the past few months. In this bed over here the plan is that I'm going to have leek. In the other bed I'm going to have a mixture of parsnips and maybe some turnips and then this bed is going to be a whole combination of maybe rainbow chard, mizuna, greyhound lettuce, maybe some onions. I'm not too sure about the exact placement yet but that's the plan. And then in this one I've got some ramson or wild garlic. I don't want this in the ground it spreads like a weed so that's why it's here in the pot. Over here around the beds what I'm planning to do is plant a whole load of dandelions because I want to encourage bees to this part of the garden and dandelions are very useful plants. They're medicinal, they're good for teas, they're also very good for making dandelion wine and dandelion mead but I need to lift the weed proof membrane before I really go ahead and start planting them deliberately. But for the most part over the winter I've been improving the soil and it's amazing, there are baby worms everywhere. The main thing I did is I added a load of ground eggshells, leaves to create a nice covered area because when you put leaves down like this the worms go mental and once you move it away, even in here in these pots I've been putting leaves, I've also been putting inoculated wood chips which have got wine cap mushrooms in them and the soil quality is insane so even though it doesn't look like I've done much, I can't even put into words how much the soil has improved and I can't wait to see how well the plants grow in them. Now those buckets are going to hold tomatoes and potatoes but this area over here this is where I'm going to have the quail cage and my idea for this has been moving around a lot but I'll get to that in a bit. For the moment I've put a few more trees. I've got the apple in the middle, plum, over here I have a cherry and around all of them on all these wood chips I've inoculated the whole area with wine cap so as soon as the weather warms up there should be wine cap mushrooms everywhere and I can't wait. And those trees that I've put in are doing so well. Some of them are going to be espaliered, some of them are going to be fanned. I've also got some new compost bins over here, a pear tree, the old apple tree, which you've already seen. And then eventually in this corner, I want to have a nectarine, which hopefully will arrive in the next week or I'll miss the season and I'll have to wait till next year. But I've also been trying to use up all the space. So over here in these little rows, I have a load of garlic. And then this area over by the fence is going to be where my beans grow. Otherwise, it's just a bit of wasted space. So I made a slightly raised area. And this area in the summer gets, it just gets so much sun. The one thing I did do is I tried to put stones in between that little raised bed and the fence because I don't want the soil directly against the boards in case it rots. So it just, that's all the space the beans need. And then right in front of it, I have my blueberries. And if you're wondering why I cut up my Christmas tree and put it around it, it's because blueberries need acidic soil. And Things like coffee grounds, tea, uh, pine needles, Christmas tree branches will keep the soil acidic and keep it perfect for the blueberries and as you can see they're already very happy and it's only just February so I can't wait to see what they're going to grow like this year. The quail area is going to take time because I've got to plant clover and a whole load of plants that will do really well for them but that's going to be a project for a later date. For the moment I'm going to show you what's in this bucket over here and this is my worm farm. I can't believe I'm excited about worm farms, but yes, I am excited about worm farms because they make great potting mix. They improve the soil so much and when they make their worm castings, you can put that on your fruit trees, on your fruits, and it just increases the soil fertility. Once it's grown a little bit more, I'll be making a second worm farm with that bucket. And then over here, I have a small rhubarb plant. If you're wondering what all those little white things are, that's ground up eggshell. And what I found is ground up eggshell is great for slugs, but what you need to do is you need to grind them up because if you just crush them in your hands, they're large enough where the slug can just crawl over them. But if they're small and gritty, they scratch at the slugs and the slugs don't want to go near them and it works really, really well. So that's what I've been putting on all the raised beds, around my rhubarb, and even along the garlic that I've planted along here. The next part of the garden that I've been doing a lot of work on is this area over here and you'll recognize this as what was originally the compost bin. Now I stopped doing this just because it was too much of a pain in the neck moving the compost and I also broke my thumb and ripped my nail up moving the compost so at that point I decided to stop which is going to turn these into raised beds and this stretch of green is what was left of my original plan for the quail cage but at the moment it's just slug bait to keep them away from all my other plants and then the new plants like colt's foot which is a medicinal plant you do need to know what you're doing with this just because it's a herbal plant does not mean it's completely edible and safe but on the same topic I've got a load of Russian comfrey growing along underneath these leaves and I've also got some raspberry which for me is an incredibly important plant 
because if you tend to get that time of the month pain where it's really 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 bad things like nettle like i have growing here and raspberry for me are absolutely essential they make the pain a lot more bearable so i will be growing a lot of those in the garden and then in the polytunnel over here i made these new raised beds again over the winter a lot of it has been about improving the soil quality so there's layers of leaves there's layers of inoculated wood chip so again wine cap mushrooms should be growing all over this but the biggest pain in the neck for me at the moment are the bluebells because we have some spanish bluebells which grow in a whole field right behind our garden and they get everywhere i don't know if fairies pick up the bulbs and dump them in my garden overnight but they're everywhere i've still got to clean the polytunnel outside just to improve the light quality but there wasn't any point up until now because the leaves stayed on the trees almost till the beginning of january it's been an incredibly warm winter and there's not really much point cleaning it until all the leaves have fallen or you're just going to get more muck on the polytunnel but once that's done and in a month or two i should be getting all the seedlings in and then i can finish things like painting off the shed adding more water butts down here and I know it looks bare and dull for the moment, but wait till you see it in a few months. There's going to be food and flowers everywhere. If you want to see a Viking Gods themed series or even a Brother Grimm themed series, you can watch my videos ad free one to two weeks early and get all my digital creations for free on Contribi. I've set it up so that there's just one support level and then as soon as you're a contributor you get complete access to all my currently unlisted videos, those are always going to be ad free for you. And once I've reached the level of contributions needed to create a new album, new music videos, books, themed art series or anything like that, I'll be able to create all of these projects and give you the extra bonuses as soon as things like the final design of the Viking Gods or the Brother Grimm is finished, then I'll be sending a hand-signed deck of cards with those designs that I will send to each and every single person who's helped me reach that contribution level. So if you're a contributor, it doesn't matter if you joined when I only had 10 contributors or if I had have 2,000 contributors. If you are a contributor, you will automatically be included in absolutely everything. There are no tiers, it's just contributors get everything. So if you want to know more about what projects I have planned and you want to help me reach those, you can find a thorough list on Contribute and I hope to see you there soon.